Okay, so I'm here to talk about the workability of their argument about banning the private possession of handguns. <coughs> um, so the first thing I want to talk about is their goal to actually get all the handguns off, <coughs> off the streets or out of people's homes. Um, and my claim is that it's not really practical to take away the handguns from everybody. Um, one of the first things that comes to mind is, of course, the Second Amendment, which is uh, well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So, of course, that comes into play, but that uh, brings up a whole different argument. So, we're going to try and steer away from that. But that would be an argument, or that would be an obstacle for them to overcome in this process. So. There are a lot of handguns produced each year in America. Um, I have a statistic from Guns in America by the numbers. It says that the number of guns manufactured in the U.S. has nearly doubled in just a few short years, from nearly 5.5 million in 2010 to nearly 10.9 million in 2013. The overwhelming majority of these guns stay on U.S. soil. <coughs> Around 400,000 firearms were exported in 2013. Uh, they had a graph mentioned uh, with this article that showed that over 4 million handguns were produced in just 2013 alone. So that's a lot of number of guns in just one year to get off the streets, so how exactly are we going to get them <coughs> off the streets? Um, well, one of the reasons that they could use is, of course, a gun buyback, but those don't necessarily help out too much. Um, an example that I have from what is this? how do U.S. gun laws compare to other countries? They mentioned a mass shooting in Australia, which occurred in 1996. Um, the National Agreement on Firearms also prohibited automatic and semi-automatic semi -automatic assault rifles. Stiffened, uh, they stiffened licensing and ownership rules and instituted a temporary gun buyback program that took some 650,000 assault weapons, about one-sixth of their national stock, out of public circulation. Now, um, 650,000 guns in Australia is one-sixth of their population. That's not even close to one sixth of the, or that is close to one sixth of the amount of handguns produced in America in 2013 alone. That's a huge number to get back, and they still, you can still see they didn't get all of the guns back. Uh -huh. Let's see, another statistic on gun buybacks has to do with some that happened in the United States. In June 2007 and 2015, there was a gun buyback program in uh, Tampa, Florida. According to Alex Tabrak, professor of economics at George Mason University, it is impossible to significantly reduce the number of guns in a community with buyback events that collect, on average, fewer than 1,000 firearms. In the United States, there are thousands of millions of guns, he says. And even if a city buys up some of them, that's not going to have any effect on how many guns people actually have. People can still have go out and buy more guns. And that is completely true, even if we stop the manufacturing of guns, there's still plenty of guns in circulation, let alone handguns within the United States from all the previous years. Um, going on further, um, there are a lot of drawbacks to gun buybacks. Um, one of them being that a lot of people give guns that don't work or guns that they normally wouldn't use in crimes. Um, a quote that I have from the problems with gun buyback programs states that the main drawback to gun buyback programs is that they tend to get junk guns or guns that have been with a family for a long period of time. They're not catching the semi-automatic handguns that are so prevalent in violent crimes today. And that just goes to show that these programs aren't really going to be helpful, and how else are we going to be able to get guns off the street if we do implement the private ownership of handguns. Um, so you talk about the need. So I don't think the proper thing to do is privately, or ban the private ownership of handguns. There needs to be something else to be done. Um, it, it's not really going to solve the problem by taking away the handguns from everybody. Um, for example, in Norway, there was a shooting that killed 77 people in 2001. Um, some analysts in the United States say that the rampage um, didn't really stop due to the strict gun laws that they have. Norway's gun laws include um, requiring applicants to be at least 18 years of age, specify a valid reason for gun ownership, and attain a government license. And clearly it didn't work in this case. Um, like Jared said earlier, that 65% of juvenile homicides use guns, but as can seen here, that won't stop anyone that actually wants to do something. In another article by Charles D.W. Cook, it states that those who are willing to break laws against murder do not care about the regulation of firearms <coughs> and will get a hold of weapons whether doing so is legal or not. And it just goes to further back my previous uh, quote because Someone willing to commit a crime isn't going to stop 
with one law, they're just going to keep on going. And to further show that um, banning guns isn't really going to help anything, um, we're going to continue off of Norway statistics. Norway is ranked 10th in worldwide in gun ownership, and it's placed near the bottom in gun homicide rates. The U.S. is roughly 64 times higher. Now, the U.S. has 64 times higher of gun homicide rates, but the U.S. is also uh, three times higher in gun ownership rates. So clearly there's something not adding up, there's something more than just having guns in circulation that is causing this problem, and it has to do with the people. In a quote from Nine Principle, Pros, and Cons of Gun Control, it states that more harsh gun control laws are not needed. What is needed, however, is a greater focus on education <coughs> about firearms. We should teach people from an early age the damage that they can do, how to properly and safely use them, and the steps to take to make sure that they are safely used and stored. Education is the key. So when it comes down to it, it's really about being educated about handguns. Um, it's all about safety. You're using a weapon that can kill someone in an instant, and a lot of times people aren't really exposed to that, so they don't know the, the dangers of it and how to properly use one. And I believe that could, prop, that could save a lot of people from these accidental gun deaths. And also, another workability plan that I have is the disadvantage of banning uh, the private ownership of handguns. Um, from the same article, it says that if a criminal knows that a person has a gun, they are much less likely to attempt a crime. If criminals know that people no longer have guns, the crime rates would greatly increase. Um, this is also like with schools, when they do not allow guns on campus or safe places, um, people are more likely to go and shoot up these places knowing that no one is there or no one is able to fight back. <coughs> that is why that their argument on, the, on banning the private ownership of handguns will not work. <coughs> <coughs>